It is 7.01. We'll call to order this November 8th, 2022 town council meeting. Everyone can please rise from the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Everyone can be seated. Technology is going to steal your agenda for a second. Maybe time unloaded. So uh, we have no questions. So we'll move to item five, which is public petitions, communications, and public participation on any subject within the jurisdiction. With a two minute limit, if you are online, you can hit star nine with the raise hand function, or if you're in the audience, you can approach the table and state your name and address for the record. All right, going once. Going twice. All right, we're going to move over to item six, public hearing items, which there are none. Item seven A, reports of boards and committees responsible to the council. Um, the firehouse improvement uh, subcommittee canceled their November meeting because we are currently in the process of getting bids by the 22nd. So our next regular meeting to receive and review those bids will be in December. So that is where we're at in terms of the meetings that were canceled for October. So that is all that I have, and I believe Bev Birchko is technically closed or is officially closed out. Or is there some final things? That, sorry, Katie. From side, we're sending the documentation to the state and requesting an audit. Okay. Yeah. That's not Maria. No, I, no. I assumed it was our. It was all good. He's the expert. Okay. Perfect. So then we'll move right along to reports. Oh. And I'll start on my right with Council Media Check. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a first. All right, so, well, one of them was last week. Uh, our, our subcommittee met last week. We went over some items. One of them is fire truck that's on the agenda tonight, so I won't go into too many details. And then, like, also gave us an update last week on the hospital renovations for the help the Colin Little League. And we also, the mental health task force met last night. A couple of things can be brought on council soon. Um, one of them is friendship. There's three different years of them. And they bring forward, it'll be more descriptive. And then another one was a um, diversity inclusion uh, committee suggestion that they also bring forth to this um, town council to discuss okay. um, from Becky and Madhu. But that's all I really have. Unless, John, if you want to fill it. Oh, I should add the Wayland, um, the people that did our our um, sorry, our surveys, we got over 300 back, which was a pretty good number. And in January, um, the consultant group is going to meet with stakeholders of the town and hopefully town council members and task force to go over those results in detail. So that should be pretty good information. Thank you. And so then I'll pass over to Commissioner Regan. Nothing for me this week. Councillor Khan? Um, it wasn't enough uh, QM, so we didn't, there was no meeting. Okay. Councillor Murray? No, I start um, as the Board of Ed liaison uh, for the month of November for tomorrow. All right. Lucky me. Right. And then Conservation Commission met, I believe, on the 13th. They had a presentation on green corridors. Uh, they had their ongoing project updates with the wanted project. Um, and then next week on the 14th, the Colin Library Foundation will be meeting. So that is it for me. So we'll move on to 8 1 consideration of resolution authorizing Brian J. Foley, town manager, to execute an assistance agreement and all their documents pertaining to this grant funding with the State Historic Preservation Office, SHPO. A division of the Department of Economic and Community Development for grant funding of the Tolland, Old Tolland County Jail and Museum. This action modified language and resolution 22-20 by updating the town manager's name to reflect, to reflect Brian J. Foley's appointment. So pretty self-explanatory, but I'll toss it over to Brian if you want to add any additional context to that item. No, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, um, I want the green and all the uh, buildings around it to be as uh, ADA, ADA accessible as possible. And there exists other issues within said building, uh, but let's work on pushing the needle. Um, so I support this. 
Do you have anything? Uh, what it is is that we'll be hiring an architect to design and put the specs together for an ADA ramp and uh, repair the porches. And, uh, we will have the assistance agreement in hand, and when Brian has signed it, we'll be moving forward. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Are there any questions for the council members? All right. Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the resolution of outline in 8.1. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. So moved by Councilman Murray, seconded by Councilman Udicek. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That is unanimous. So we'll move over to 8.2, which is the consideration of a resolution for ARPA subcommittee funding use recommendation for the fire rescue truck. Um, there was some information that uh, Mr. Foley provided to the vice chair and I that is going to bring forward just tonight and have for the record. So I'm going to take it right over to you, Brian, to find an update. Uh, so kind of kind of bring it up to speed and, and um, uh, council person you to check I apologize this, this was in our ARPA subcommittee meeting but uh, you know we've done some granular uh, fact finding uh, since said ARPA subcommittee meeting um, in our regular course of business uh, in our uh, interviews regarding our capital improvements program and five-year plan um, we did a, a granular analysis uh, or discovery of all the um, public safety vehicles we have here uh, within the town of Tolland. Um, and uh, within that discovery, um, it turned out that we had six engine tankers. This um, ARP money would, for a million dollars, would be a request for a seventh, and then we would unload the oldest engine tanker to bring us back down to six. However, in looking at the 2010 uh, analysis uh, pr provided by a consultant, that the town would be adequately, adequately served uh with five but recommended four and then we should have trit out the fifth truck um as it naturally aged out of service uh and moreover that it would the town would be adequately adequately served with four tankers engine i mean sorry engine trucks even if one broke down with the three and other equipment uh it recommended two tankers which we have and then updating our, our light duty uh trucks as well um so we currently have six. This would be a um, million dollars to authorize a brand new sixth. Um, and our, stat, our, our apparatus analysis from a, a professional consultant hired in 2010. And in my, my experience, public safety uh, analysis has typically last for uh, two decades. So I do not believe it's stale, nor do I believe there's been any radical population change uh, or radical calls for service that would make that entirely stale. Uh, while I would fiscally say we should go down to four engine tankers, I think five um, is a comfortable level for all of us, um, but certainly six um, is well beyond what the consultant had recommended. As a result, I cannot um, recommend that we do a six uh, or this million dollar ARPA fund for the fire truck with so many other ARPA projects uh, on the horizon. Uh, my recommendation would be that uh, Lisa and I regroup with Chief Vitell uh, this week, redo a relook at the uh, five year plan, take into consideration the apparatus analysis that we have. Um, maybe, uh, and, and this is at no fault of uh, Chief Vitell at all. I, I, I would want. Uh, my public safety officials to try to get the best in equipment they can they can do it at the same time we have to be uh, fiscally responsible uh, to the town and um, again we've said it before and I'll say it again we all sleep very well at night knowing uh, Chief Vitale and his staff are uh, protecting us and uh, we all have family children parents and otherwise friends uh, in in the town and we want them best protected I am not a public safety expert but I'm not bad uh, and the expert says four. The expert says uh, the fifth truck should be attrited out. I'm fine with keeping the fifth truck. Uh, I'm not sure what the population growth since 2010 is. I'm happy to look into that. I know there's been a trend in the last couple of years going down, but I also know Santini's coming in here uh, with a development. I would um, I would look to uh, instill a pattern of hiring a consultant based on population growth or something radical happening in town or drop. And I will look to the um, 
town services to define the number of uh, residents we have now as compared to when, the, when this came out and then look to define when we should um, have another consultant come in and do an apparatus and staffing analysis uh, for us. Uh, so so that's that's my recommendation. Uh, council person, you, you check. I'm sorry, like I said, we didn't have this um, prior to. This consultant report's been in, in the town offices for 12 years. Um, and so it, it's it's managed to, to slide by, but I cannot, with so many other art potential projects out there, I, I, I apologize to uh, our hardworking chief and his staff, but I cannot uh, recommend that. No, I appreciate the update and obviously making it known to everyone, but obviously, you know, there is obviously a deep level of respect for public safety, but obviously this was a, an error in, in judgment in terms of bringing it out, but um, but no, I'm glad that this is being caught and that we can utilize ARPA funds for other necessary capital expenditures. Uh, and I think just to your point about population, uh, the 2020 census was recently conducted and we've had a slight population decline. Obviously that might shift with the new San Antonio developments, but we're a few years out from that. But we obviously need to be prepared long-term for those types of developments coming into town. So thank you for that additional context. I'll uh, open the floor to questions for council members. Thanks for reading. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, my initial question was the 2010 um, analysis. It, was that still relevant? You've already addressed that. You said those are typically good for about 20 years. I believe so, but they can go longer. This would depend on uh, any updates that are radical in fire science or um, uh, population and calls for service uh, okay. and such, you know, and it, it, different demographic issues that could affect calls for service. And I don't think we've had any radical changes since then. Okay, and then uh, your recommendation was to get another analysis at some point. Do you have any idea when that may? My be recommendation made? would be, should we see a radical change in any sort of population, demographic, or fire science that would uh, require that? So what I'm saying is, I'm happy with this analysis, but we shouldn't rest our laurels on it for the rest of our lives. Let's, you know, if if there's a radical change, and if, if we look at 2010, you know, what we expect in 2025, maybe we look for one in five or 10 years, another uh, analysis. Uh, in, in prior lifetimes, I would we would rely heavily on staffing analysis as they relate to um, calls for service, but obviously staffing, budgeting, spending, um, and equipment. Staffing analysis is our, our great crutch. Uh, as our apparatus analysis. Okay, well, thank you. And I'd be interested to hear uh, from the chief uh, about his opinion on, on the analysis that was conducted in 2010 and anything, any other relevant information that you may have. That's not that takeaways. Not if anybody else has any other questions, that's fine. But that would be my go ahead, John. Question. So, We've always obviously had a replacement schedule for the apparatus that is there. Um, there's been back, two back-to-back -back studies, 10 years, like Mr. Uh, like Brian, the town manager has said. Um, <clears throat> the levels of calls for service have changed dramatically as far as the different types of natures of calls. Um, ISO changes, <clears throat> building codes change from year to year. We just had a huge major upload of building codes and different health evaluations, but um, technology has changed and technology is obviously evolution changing as we move forward. So we're getting into a new trend where we're, we're obviously trying to eliminate a heavy rescue that we just purchased the last vehicle that has just come in going to a new concept that is uh, nationwide. Uh, and the concepts, everyone gets discouraged or you know uh, confused between the terminology of a an engine tank, a tanker, a squad, attack unit. So a squad is a two and two and one truck. Uh, so we're going into that and we're trying to stay um, consistent and maintain uh, to run, you know, uniformly for safety training and response evolutions. So, you know, obviously we we're we're in the midst of the capital budget now, and unfortunately, uh, during the last two to two to three years, I think the nation and especially every community has seen a huge trend in uh, prices and uh, delays of different types of uh, equipment or different types of shortages. Um, so as we have those delays and shortages and ordering stuff, prices are going up uh, months to months to months. So 
you know, obviously you see the prices in, in front of you tonight. And unfortunately, we probably have the highest capital assets of apparatus or equipment. Um, but we need to get to a level playing field to make command level decisions um, and where the nation's going as far as career staffing and volunteer staffing. You're, you're obviously very fortunate in Collins to have a combination puppet staffing, which is saving you as far as the volunteering versus the full-fledged, uh, full-time 24-7 department. But we're trying to take baby steps to get to that. And we've tried to apply for these grants, but we're similar to some of the other grants that we're applying for the town, whether rural or urban, and those different aspects, our population changes, our evolutions are changing. So we're trying to move to that trend. And, um, you know, obviously we're in the capital budget meetings now, and, you know, I look forward to uh, reconvening with uh, the town manager to, you know, look at the overall plan. But we are obviously are all residents and taxpayers as well. And we have a hard time swallowing the numbers that are there, that are coming forth ahead of us. So when you jump from a $696,000 purchase of a year ago to six months ago at 820 to 920, 950, 990 now, you know, those are huge prices. And those prices are not going to be going down. Those are only going to be going up. So unfortunately, our capital budgets have to compete with all the other departments' capital budgets in the school system. And you know, it's there's the there's the only the golden pot that is there. Um, we all have to be fair and look at and balance projects together as a community and a team. So um, you know, we're very fortunate to have Brian and especially Lisa and the financial aspects of the town between the school board and the town to, to look at everything and make the, the right decisions as we move forward. And you know, we want to look at downsizing or looking, but you know, combining all the efforts together. So I guess uh, I'll wait for my follow-up meeting with the boss and you know the experts to come up with a, a, a game plan and take my marching orders from there. Very good. So um, if if the analysis from 2010 is correct, then we would need to buy another truck. Do, do you agree with that or is that is that accurate? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I agree with that portion of it, but I think we're pushing the inevitable down the road by not upgrading. I'd rather get rid of the older, the older apparatus and continue <clears throat> on the plan we're at right now. I think, I think we're just, you know, we've got a getting rid of, we were posed to get rid of a 35 year old truck um, with this next vehicle purchase. And, um, I would rather see that go and even a, in another one of the older ones, the 30 year old trucks that we have versus sacrificing a, a brand new dual purpose truck. I intend on letting the 35 year truck go. We can sell that, bring yeah. the 240 over that we have being refurbished that doesn't have a home uh, to replace that truck and still have five, one more than the consultant mm -hmm. report. Uh, so you, we obviously don't want to sacrifice safety. So we, the scenario we don't want to have is something happens in town and we say, geez, if we had bought that truck, this wouldn't have happened. That's what we want to avoid. So I'm just trying to figure out in my mind, I'm, I'm start processing this from earlier today. I'm just starting to get some information about this. So I, I just want to make sure that you're you're able to do your jobs that, and your department is able to keep our town safe with the equipment we have. Uh, we always talk about need to have versus nice to have. We talk about that all the time in the council. So the new truck is it? We need this in order to keep the community safer. If we don't have it, our community is going to be less safe. Is, is that? So I can't, I, I, and I can't, sorry, I can't, I can't, and I, you can't put me on the spot professionally because we approved the the, um, the bid waiver to get the ET240 out for the refurb. The same, it's going to be the sister truck. And I've always promised the town that we spec trucks out to last 20 years. If it's a good truck, maintenance is our okay, service costs are okay, then I'll go for the refurb. Rescue 240 wasn't a Rescue 240 was a money hole pit for this town. When you decided to dump, go to a combo truck. ET 240 was a sister truck of ET 140 that just got the refurbing. That will be a solid truck 
that we could push another 10 to 11 years out and put the money into it and save probably $750,000 versus just saying, respect it for 20, it's time to replace it. We've done refurbs on the other trucks and we've pushed over the 10 year, 11, 12 year mark. We don't wanna keep pushing it down the road. But as we move forward, I had to buy the parts for the refurb that we're currently doing because of the chain supply issues. So perfect example is Animals 5, where he has one of those chain issues where if that microchip goes down, you're down one ambulance and it could be six months. If you're down an ambulance, you're losing 36 to $50,000 of revenue a month to two months. So as that revenue goes away, your fund goes away that replaces those types of apparatus. So I can't, we can say seven months to eight months, maybe nine months for a refer project to go. The supply chain issue or something happens, then that's gonna just push that project out farther. And if you come up with the next project, so we're already back to back, two ambulances on order. I still don't have a VIN number for the last chassis that we ordered a year and almost more ago. We ordered a new one in July. I still don't have a VIN number for that. We're number 15 still on the waiting line. That's a national crisis of ambulances. And unfortunately, we're at that stage where we've already done the remounts of both of those chassis. So we're at the replacement schedule. So it's a national it's a national shortage. I will try to provide the, the services as best as we can, but we're not the only community facing it. All the other communities are going through it. I spent an hour on the phone with two communities last night, next door neighbors to us, asking me what I was doing and where we're going um, because they're facing the same dilemma. Does that make sense? So as we move forth, <clears throat> you never know what could happen. You could, when we do all our mandatory testing, you could blow a pump on an apparatus once March and April comes, and it could blow the pump, could seize the motor. You never know what could end up happening. And then that's a timeline, and then you got to come up with a repair money. So we do our best to try to supplement a piece of the pie, but it's a hard, it's a hard gamma when you have a lot of work shortages still, supply chain issues, and you know, just other aspects. I mean, you know, I mean. Look at coffee creamer. wasn't in supermarkets for three weeks. Everyone was thinking there was a major shortage. That's a simple thing. Gas prices are going up. It, it, everything's just, it's a balancing act. And I think we're going to be through this for the next year to two years. Okay. So we, we have to make a decision on this tonight. So um, as we sit here today, in, in both of your opinions, um, is the safety of our community compromised by not having that that truck, or do you feel like you can you can provide the safety that the community needs with the equipment that you have as we sit here today? The safety's not compromised. I'm not gonna, you know, for the for to to purchase a new truck. It's just I just feel that we're as we've done for the past 20 years, 20, 30 years, kick the can down the road again, that here we go now, we still have an older fleet. And you know, I'd rather, like I said, and and I'd rather get rid of older trucks and uh, and and do do it that way versus um, keep the older trucks and worry about what the problems are going to be. We keep the trucks up very good. They're not unsafe. They're not. They can't not do the job. But <clears throat> trying to. Uh, work with the, the shortages we have for volunteer staffing, along with the limited number of career staff we have during the day, trying to co combine things on one apparatus, you know, it sort of changes our strategy now uh, from where we were, where we were starting to head. Can I provide some input? Sure. So what, what the Chief Vitale said? about switching over to the squad concept is basically a new type of a fire truck. Like we have, we just purchased one that's already arrived and uh, in, um, right down here on Merrill Road at 240, I believe. Um, and it's beautiful, I embrace that concept. And as we replace and age out the uh, older trucks, as I intend to do, and uh, we're working with Lisa to plan that out, um, we will go to that squad concept and buy uh, those. That being said, keep in mind, the consultant said we should have 
four trucks. And we could even have one in disrepair and still cover the town safely. We have six. We can get rid of an older truck right now and have the same coverage that we have. We could get rid of a truck. As soon as that 240 comes back from being referred, we can get rid of an older truck and have the exact same coverage we had uh, prior to. And that is uh, two trucks over. So I, I, I think. You know, buying this one is is well well. Um, the assistant chief, you know, is saying we need to. You know, this is not kicking the can down the road. This is opening the can that's been ignored for a dozen years. Um, and I, I I want the apparatus to be updated, and we'll work to do that uh, diligently. Uh, but how many trucks is too many? I don't know the answer to that, but this consultant does, and it provided that answer. And um, we have to responsibly stay within that. I'd love to have 10 fire trucks in this town. Thank you, Vice Chair. You know, I'm just going to feedback on another question, probably. Um, in re regards to ARPA, this might actually be a question for either Brian or uh, Colleen. How much time do we have to utilize the remaining ARPA funds? Is it 2025, 2026? Lisa, Lisa, how much time do we have for the ARPA? Unless you know, Colleen, do you know off the top of your head? Um, I thought about a year. Yeah, we, we um, anybody can answer. Everybody's got an answer. Go ahead. Lisa, I see you're up there. If you're able to answer, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Um, we have to have, from my understanding, the orders in place and the commitments in place by the end of 2024. And then it has to be, the cash has to be fully expended by the end of 2026. That is my understanding, and I can double check it tomorrow, but that's how I understand it. Okay, so I appreciate that because obviously we are you're in the throes of the next capital budget cycle, but looking back at our last budget, year two, 23, 24, which is going to be year one coming up, we have on our list a replacement of engine tank 440 at 750, which sounds like it's probably going to be revised up to a million. That's that's the one we're talking about tonight. Yeah. No, right. that's, there's one for your refurbishment. I feel like that, that one's a 2003 tanker. It seems like there's other public safety capital equipment that is starting to age out that could be utilized for future use of ARPA funds uh, rather than- this All something equipment. that we would look at when we re re reconvene. The tankers, I place a high value on um, as water is the issue here in town. Yeah. Try to get there fast. Yeah, so this, just, this will not affect the gallon either. Yeah, just looking forward at the next few years and just seeing public safety has things that are rolling up. And if we have the time to, bump up one of those to another year, I think that's a solution rather than, uh, you know, you utilizing it now. So just wanted to keep that in mind going forward. Are there any other questions from council members? I'll just make a comment. Um, the appreciation. I'm a little frustrated that I just found out a little while ago book tonight, but that's okay. I guess I'd rather have it found out than find out a year from now from residents that are upset that we uh, buy in too much equipment. I'm still, still not quite fully, fully convinced that we have too many fire trucks. So, um, you can talk about different fire trucks, but they all have a different, they all do a different job, right? And that's defined in the consultant report. Okay. And that consultant report was in 2010. You said it's good for 20 years. Typically, but I'd have to look at the demographics of the town, the calls for service, and heck, we can hire another consultant if you'd like um, to look at it again. Um, but I don't think that's necessary, as we're too we're too over what they recommended back then, right now. And at the end, and and if, if by my recommendation would be to be, let's get one extra from what they recommended back in 2010. So I'm not even saying let's match what they did in 2010. Heck, let's we, we already have the trucks. Let's keep it at five now. Just to be on the safe side, let's have that extra truck. I just don't think two engine tankers. Their recommendation was one engine tanker in each house. We have four houses. We have six engine tankers. I'm happy with going with five. Well, I guess that's just another conversation we have to have as a council is hiring somebody else to do a full evaluation and on. 
all the firehouses apparatus and equipment or whatever, but not whatever. <laughs> Important equipment, not just, but uh, I am frustrated about how this is happening. Um, and if I have any further questions, I can go around and bring it up. I don't know. Yeah, no, I was listening in and I was uh and I was uh paying attention on my way in here. So uh I'll pass on anything uh, for other questions. Yeah, thank you, Councilor Blue. But so Marie has none. Are there any other questions? Um so obviously I think at this point it was recommended by the town manager to, to vote down the uh appropriation. So I think we would still have to call a vote. Uh, I think it might be good to do a roll call, otherwise we can do a voice vote. If there's any intention for that, we can just do a voice vote on um, yay or nay. But if there's any contention, if anyone is unsure, they think they'll vote, we can do roll call. Yes. Yes, yeah, so we have to definitely make a motion and vote it down if we're going to board not, not doing it. So I would make a motion uh, to consider the resolution as outlined in 8.1 or 8.2. My apologies. I'll make that motion. Great. Is there a second? Second. Okay, second by Council Mutichek. Is there any further discussion? So, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. All those opposed, signify by saying nay. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. So, that is unanimous. So, obviously, as Brian said at the beginning, you'll go back to the drawing board with the public safety and ARCA subcommittee so that we are brought forward other apparatus or equipment to uh, consider. So thank you for that. Uh, we are moving on to item 8.3, which is appointments to vacancies on various municipal boards and commissions. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve these three appointments and appointments as outlined in 8.3A, 3.3C. I have a question. I'm sorry. Do you want me to wait until after the motion? Uh, yeah, that's okay. Yep. Yeah. I'll make that motion. All right. Is there a second? Second by Councilor Regan. Are there any discussion questions for council members? Yeah, I just wanted to confirm that uh, these reappointments went through our um, vacancy committee, uh, Sam and Lou, for consideration. For the reappointments? Yeah. The, the, the reappointments generally, unless there's a, a request for somebody to step down or that they uh, submit, that, I mean, the, the entire time that I've been on the uh, appointment committee, including the last term, that it's unless there's a significant objection that uh, that needs to be brought up that uh, that generally that they've been reappointed unless they and asked to uh, to step down. Thank you. All right. Any further questions? All right. Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. That is unanimous. We'll move on to nine old business. So I intend to the town manager report. If you want to give any summary, Brian? And I know I believe we received a communication through myself and Vice Chair Regan regarding some items on the manager's report. Hopefully, I can answer those. Um, so we we hiring wise, Megan's back. I think I already mentioned that, but we did hire our first female firefighter. Um, Chief Lytell hired her. She started on November first, and we do have our new animal control. Um, I'd submit the report as, report as written and answer your questions. I did want to. Uh, Remark on the good good work of the Department of Public Works and the what they did at the cemetery, which um, we communicated on on social media. So um, fantastic job by uh, our staff there. Right. So I know there were some questions. I do want to reiterate them for the record. Yes, sure. Um, so I had uh, two questions regarding um, public works. Uh, the first was regarding the. Um, road repavement uh, that was completed this year. It was great to see that six miles of road were uh, completed. Completed, thank you. Uh, and my question was, is that what the goal was for the year? Uh, did they meet their goal? Did they exceed their goal? Yes, that is that is the modest goal based on um, previous years predicting what we can afford. Obviously, we'd like to repave all the roads um, in town. However, we have a budget of a million dollars a year um, based on uh, referendum. We would likely, looking into the future, um, at a, at, I believe it was roughly 120 miles of roads we're doing. Um, the road, John, you know off the top of your head. I think Scott had said 120 today. Um, 
at six miles a year, we're going to be doing this for a long time. Um, but uh, at any rate, um, that's the answer to your question. Six was uh, predicted and achieved. Great. And I, I would say also uh, that I walk on some of the new roads that were done this year. They did a great job. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, my other question was regarding the um, poles at the, uh, the I'm sorry, the pole shed. pole shed. Thank you for the highway division. Um, it looks like from your report that the bids came in much higher than expected. Uh, that is accurate. Uh, the, the bids were all uh, very high, and we have um, some information from the manufacturer, I believe, that uh, the bids should be lower, and they are certainly higher than what we wanted to spend. Um, Bev, is that accurate? So we're going to go back out to bid with the expectation that the bids will come in lower? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Great. Good to know. Thank you so much. Thank Those you. Those are my questions. Dr. Murray, are there any other questions from council members? All right, seeing none, we'll move to item 11, which is adoption of minutes. Uh, I think we have a motion to approve the minutes as outlined in 11.1 11 and 11.2. 11 so moved. So by Councilman Murray. Second. Thank you by Councilor Luba. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Everything was signed 12 correspondence to council. Sure. Um, this is correspondence since. October 25th, uh, there were four emails that came in, two regarding elections, uh, one regarding electric school buses, and one regarding the diversity and, equi and equity inclusion uh, committee. Thank you. So that brings us to item 13, chairperson's report. So obviously the chair's were, uh, hour was canceled last week, so it has re been rescheduled for this Thursday from 637 to the library. Um, I did forget to mention the uh, Capital Region Council of Governments had a meeting on the 26th uh, where we approved a ethics policy and conflict of interest update for the group and just to probably invite members of the town council if they would like to attend on November 16th at 4 p.m. There'll be a tour of workspace in Manchester followed by a crowd social event at Urban Lodge Brewery. So if members of the town council or the town would like to meet and greet with other community leaders and the Capital Regional Council of Government staff, you're more than welcome to. So that is it for me for updates. Uh, that will bring us to item 14, communications and petitions from council persons. Councilor Luba. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, just uh, as we're approaching, uh, well, one, as we're on election day, uh, I'd like to uh, express my uh, thanks to uh, the entire town and all our residents that just judging upon uh, what we've had so far as returns, that this looks like to be the largest turnout that we've had in elections in a number of years. And so uh, I think that's something that's outstanding that uh, that everyone is taking part in, the, in what is really a civic duty as far as voting. The uh, other issue is we're coming up on uh, on Veterans Day, of course, uh, that I just had an opportunity to come back from uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, last week after staying there for a week and visiting the various memorials. And uh, I just want to express uh, as a veteran, uh, my thanks to all of the veterans that we have here in, uh, in the town uh, and uh, for the continued service and uh, and the past service and uh, that just a sincere heartfelt appreciation for everybody, uh, for all the veterans, for all that they've done for this town, this state, and this country. Thank you. Thank you, Council. We would also like to reciprocate that and thank you for your service as a veteran as well as serving on this council. <laughs> this is not what I did, but I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> And I just want to add with that to your comment about the elections too, that there is 20 minutes left. If you would like to go <laughs> vote, you can vote at the senior center or the rec center. And if you have any questions, the registrar's office is a couple of floors down from this building. So if you have any questions, you can reach out, but the clock is a ticking. So <laughs> with that, we'll move to item 15, which is public. Oh, sorry, my apologies. I just um, kind of want to echo what Lou just said. I think everybody in the town done a great job for today. And I noticed the exceptional public uh, work, workers out there. I see mm -hmm. them out there helping elderly people with walkers or whatever, getting them out of their cars and everything. So I think that's just great. And it was great to see this um, community working together to help others that need assistance. And then this other thing, I'll follow up with you. What are you doing now? No, I'm just wondering about um, replacement for somebody on the commission with people with disabilities. Okay. Um, but I can follow up with him. 
Are there any before I just want to jump? I want to thank all town staff for uh, yes. Colleen stole my thunder. <laughs> I want to thank all of the registrar's office and all the volunteers and the people the people that, that come to help us out. So uh, they've done an amazing job so far, and I uh, visited both polling stations a couple of times today. So good job. Thank you. Right. Are there any other communications or petitions? All right, seeing none, we'll move to 15, which is publicly listed participation on any subject within the jurisdiction of town council with a three minute limit. If you're in the public, you can approach the table, visit your name and address. If you are on Zoom, you can hit star nine or uh, raise hand function for Zoom. All right, going once, going twice. Item 16, I will make a motion to adjourn at 7 42 p.m. Second. Someone. So moved by Kelvin Murray. Yeah, seconded by Kelvin Murray. I thought it was moved. <laughs> all right. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 As unanimous, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.